Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Clinical Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Rhonda Nelson. I am so glad that you're here with me today. So this particular podcast episode, we actually are doing a video. So you will be able to access this particular episode on our YouTube channel. So I'll give you more information about that later. But I am again, once again, have an amazing guest with me today. Her name is Chrissy Weathersby Ball. She is a friend that I actually met at a conference and we just kind of caught eyes. We captured each other, like just walking by. I saw her. We just kind of had this little connection. And then you know how things work. You start running into the same person. You kind of run into them over and over and over. We ended up sitting at this table together and I was uh, just naturally very drawn to her. And we ended up becoming friends and come to find out she is a master at all things camera and video. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about her background and why she's so qualified to talk about being on camera. But one of the things I know about healthcare practitioners or really any business that has a public facing image is that your business needs to be able to connect, you as the practitioner need to be able to connect with the people who are your perfect audience or your perfect patient. And one of the best ways to do that is by using video. So Chrissy, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. Hi. Hi. Look at Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. So <laughs> we are going to do our best because Chrissy and I right now, we can actually see each other. So we're going to do yes. our best to translate for those of you that are listening to make sure that we're using lots of descriptive terms so that you don't miss out on anything that we're doing visually because this was a visual episode and there was a reason why we wanted to record it. But Chrissy, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me and tell us a little bit about you. Well, whenever somebody asks me that or asks me to tell them about me, I'm like, where do I even start? Because you think <laughs> about your life and I'm a mom. I've got two little kiddos right now. They are four and seven. And so that's where my mind goes, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's it. That's kind of where it starts and stops sometimes. Yeah. But I am a wife. I'm a mom. And um, I have actually been a stunt woman in um, Hollywood, which is kind of like, feels like my secret life right now for almost 18 years now. So um, I have been on feature films and TV shows and have just really learned a lot, I would say over the last 18 years about being in front of the camera and how it translates when we are in our businesses and trying to create videos um, for our communities. So that is my background. That is uh, what I do. I love that because I, I, I know when I first heard that about you, I thought that means you're like swinging, like jumping off of buildings and like running, crashing cars and all the things that no one else wants to do. And you're like, I'll do it. I don't get that. What makes you want to do that? Like this, I know it's a sidebar conversation, but there might be a little bit of crazy in you. I'm not sure. Just saying. Yeah, I think there might be a little bit of crazy <laughs> in me for sure. But that crazy has tampered down a little bit now that I'm a mom before, you know, I have jumped off a building and I, you know, I was scared. I was really nervous. I don't yeah. know who really wouldn't be, Yeah. but, um, yeah, I would never do that now. So that kind of seems like it was a little bit of a foreign life. <laughs> I do well, slide cars. I'll slide a car every now and again. So, Oh my gosh. Like it's a, it's a world that I, most of us listening, we're all healthcare practitioners. Like we're dealing with with headaches and hangnails and, you know, blood sugar disorders. And you're over here jumping off buildings and sliding cars. But anyway, okay. So to bring this back full center, what I wanted to talk about today with you specifically is about how to have confidence on camera. So to kind of set the stage for those of you listening, you and I know camera, unless you're Chrissy, camera doesn't come naturally. And it probably didn't come naturally to Chrissy at the beginning. She's nodding her head. So that's a no. And we don't know what we don't know about being or being on camera, especially if you've never done it before. There's always a learning curve with everything. When we go to school, there's a learning curve. When you learn how to cook, there's a learning curve. When you get married, there's a learning curve. Everything has a learning curve. But with camera, that learning curve, we think, I think often we make it harder than it really has to be. 
I don't think it's as hard as it really seems. And Chrissy has been instrumental for me in helping me feel more confident when I am creating video. And those of you listening, you know that if you're not already on my email list, which you should be, there will be a link in the show notes. You'll be able to do that. But I send video. I do video all the time. And I thought I was doing a pretty good job until I met this girl. And then she said, girlfriend, you need to up your game. And it really has made a difference. And I think where it's made the biggest difference for me is in my, uh, the, my, I don't want to say confidence, but I want to say comfortability uh, in front of camera. So Chrissy, let's start with the basics. What do we need in order to, what would you tell someone who's not really comfortable doing videos? What would be the first few steps that you would tell them or tips that you would give them about how to create and, and feel like okay, I can do this. I'm in front of a camera. I can do this. What would you, what would you give? Let's start, walk us through that whole process. Well, you know, to, to, to even go back just a little bit with what you said, because I think that when you just started talking about your own process, there's so much in there. There is. And I think that when we look at somebody that's on a TV show or on film or whatever, you think that they are just kind of this person that was born that way. At least that's what I used to think, or that I had to go to film school or that I needed this extensive background to learn how to show up well and look good on camera. I mean, I don't, do you feel this? Did you feel that way? Or do you feel that way that you've had to have like some huge extensive training to look good on camera? I think I think it just is intimidating. Like, I don't know the lighting is intimidating to me or was like, I'm getting better about that, but the lighting would be intimidating. Or as a female, I'm always worried about what my clothes look like. And I think, does this make me look fat, Fat. right? That's the thing (laughs) we was women and you men go, Oh geez, here's that question again. Here we go again. again." But it's so true. For us women, we are, I, I feel like, I, does this make me look fat? Are you going to see my flabby arms? Are you going to, so what do I wear and, and how do I look? And does my hair look okay? And, and like all of those outward things, I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about what do I yes. look like on camera? And then the second part of that is, what does my background look like? Like I always yes. talk about, make sure you're looking at your background that you don't have like a leaf sticking out the top of your head because of the way you've positioned right. yourself in front of a tree. You know, you've got some background object that's confusing the viewer's ability to perceive. So I, for me, those are all the things that I think about when I'm going to do a video. Which is a lot. It's a lot I mean, for my it's, brain it's, it's to comprehend. Lot, yes. And it's a lot for everybody. And, and that's why we kind of all almost short circuit and go, well, I uh-huh. can't do it. And I uh-huh. don't want to do it because I don't even know where to start. Yeah. And so what, what, one of the first things that I tell anybody is that, you know, you don't need a whole huge extensive amount of formal training to get in front of your camera and look good and connect with the person that is watching you. You don't need it. You need to learn and kind of hone in a few different skill sets, right? But you don't need to have years and years and years of training, or maybe you're just born with that it factor, right? There are things that you can do, simple things that you can do. And we're going to talk about some of those today that will help you show up differently and feeling comfortable with who you are. And then you started talking about like, how do I look? And what does my background look like? And yes, there are aspects of all those that are important. And that's when we kind of get into the weeds and kind of sift through some of these things and take them step by step by step. But one of the biggest things that I like to share is that we tend to focus on, and the majority of the people that I coach and that I work with, are, we're so focused on everything outside. Oh, like, that is what so is my true. lighting? And what is my camera? So and true. what is a da 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 da? That we don't think about why are we making this video and who are we talking to? Oh, that's so good. And so I use the example, and Rhonda, if you just, and you don't have to say a person, but think of an actor that you really like a lot. 
but might not be very cute. Okay. I got um, one in mind. They've got fair looks. They're okay, but mm -hmm. they're not like, you know, like rock star, gorgeous. mic drop, gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Right. So then you think to yourself, why do I like this person? So now let's go a little bit deeper. Now we're not just watching the movie. We're thinking about, okay, why do I like this person? And almost always the reason why we like the person that we're watching, even if they're really not that cute, is because they are open and generous with their gift of being in that moment and sharing who they are, whether it's a character, or whether they are, you know, themselves sharing a product, something. They are who they are and they are fully open and in the moment. And because they are open and authentic, there's a connection. And that's why you like them so much. And it's amazing wow. when we really think about that, when we really think about that, there are people that we just like, you know, and they could maybe be quirky or they might look a little strange. We don't know why we like them so much. And usually if we step back and we think about it, it's because they are open and generous and they're authentic. And that's what's red. That is what resonates the most through the camera lens. So then how do we create that authenticity? Because if I'm worried about what I look like or what my background looks like, that's the stuff that's all rolling around in my head. And I don't sometimes, and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable on camera, but I would say that I'm speaking for many, many, many practitioners and business owners, clinicians in my community. They're really apprehensive about getting in front of the camera. And it's for that reason. Like, I don't know if it's going to look good. And what about my clothes? And what do I say? And, and how do I say it? And am I going to sound weird? Or am I going to act weird or quirky? So how, how do we get past that? How, I don't know how to make that transition. Well, you know, I think that, I mean, that's a lot to unpack and we could spend a lot of time yeah. with that, but yeah. I think that we could attack this twofold, right? So if you think about, for instance, you and I had talked about your background, um, even today in, uh, us filming this podcast and the location that you chose for us right. to do this podcast. Right. 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 So if we are talking about how we look and how we feel, we know that when we're in a space that reflects us to the, the, when it reflects us in the best light, how does that make us feel? It makes us feel empowered. It makes us feel that we are being represented well and professionally, right? And, it, and, so, and confidence. I mean, I would say makes me feel confident. Like, so yes. if you're listening on the podcast, you're not gonna be able to see the background, but I would recommend that you go watch the YouTube video because you'll be able to actually see what we're talking about. The background that I chose today is at my office in my clinic in Seattle. And I was thinking about a different location that was, we are at this time, it's the summertime and we are on a boat. And I was thinking about just doing this podcast slash video on the boat, but it, it was like, I thought, I don't think this looks good. And is the lighting going to be good? And I don't know. And finally, and it was the, it took more work for me to drive in, get parked, get into the office, get my equipment set up, get my mic set up, blah, blah, blah. All that was more work. But once I got here, I go, oh yeah, this oh. just feels a lot better. Like I can relax. I think that's probably yes. the best way that I could describe it. You can relax because you know that you are representing yourself and your business to the best that to, of your ability right now, right? And you're offering the best that you have with your community. That's why you can relax. And so um, when, we, when we choose clothes that make us feel empowered and confident, that helps, right? And and when we think about, and this is what I'd like to offer if you're listening or if you're watching, if you are choosing something to wear, I would ask you this question, what makes you feel good? It's so good. And what makes you feel confident? Right. Because if you can't see me right now, I'm in a tank top. <laughs> I've got my little yoga beads on. Um, I teach yoga and I am active and I have tennis shoes on with a skirt. 
you guys, okay, my sister would kill me if I revealed that, <laughs> but I am wearing this skirt with some shorts in there. Uh, um, so, and so this funny. is like dressed up for me. Okay. Um, but it's who I am. And I used to get really caught up with my clothes because that is challenging for me. It's hard for me to pick shirts that look right. <laughs> that fit right. And if I'm looking really good, then I've probably gone over to my sister's house and she's put an outfit together for me. <laughs> it's just not one of my strengths. Oh. But that used to stop me from showing up and it used to stop me from making videos and it yeah. used to stop me from serving. Right. And, and so I think that we can get caught up in trying to be something that we're not so good. So if you are not walking around with your doctor's coat on all day, then don't wear a doctor's coat on your video. <laughs> yeah. Preach it, sister. I agree. You know? That's so, so right. And, and if you guys all showed up with doctor's coats, I'd be like, what's wrong with them? All y'all would look the same. Right. And so the reason why we're attracted to certain people on video is because they come as they are. They're unique. I don't like if you and I were wearing the same shirt right now, Rhonda, if we were both wearing red shirts and dressed the same, and if yeah. I had the same white background with the little green tree in the back, I mean, probably. you guys would probably think to yourself, they're weird. Right. Right. <laughs> so the clothing then becomes part of, it's really part of the background, but the clothing and the background together are what allow us to be able to relax in front of the camera. And then we can turn around and make the focus on the person. What you're sharing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and that, you know, you can come as you are because we're unique and we don't, we're not attracted to seeing cookie cutter things. Right. But even though we feel like we have right. to fit in a certain mold, so you guys are all practitioners. So think about in your mind for a minute, what you thought you should have shown up as. Yeah. And when you think that you should show up as a certain way, I promise you it's so much work that you're like, I just can't even do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is my biggest tip for showing up. Then, like you said, you're in your environment and because you are already being authentic, you can relax. And then you can offer the information and content that you're sharing. And that is where the connection happens through the lens to the person watching you. So it's the authenticity that comes through because of the confidence and the, the, the place where you're just comfortable. Like, honestly, had I stayed in the boat because we're on the boat for the summer, had I stayed in the boat and done this interview, I can tell you, I would not have been comfortable because I would have been worried about, well, what is someone, do they not know where I am? Do I have to explain that I'm on a boat? Do I, are they going to judge me? Like, this is what I'm thinking. Are they going to judge me because I'm living on a boat? Well, what kind of boat? Well, who does she, like, that's all what goes on in my mind. And that it was a harder decision as far as time and hassle factor. But mm -hmm. I, I made the decision to come to the place where it was, it just felt comfortable for me. But Talk to us just a little bit. I know we could like go on for a long time, but I want to talk about distractions in the background. Yes. Talk to us about like not staging a background, but sort of being aware of what's in your background and what to look for. Because I think if it's, correct me if I'm wrong, but if there's too much chaos in the background, it becomes distracting away from your ability to be authentic and connect with the person because what they're doing is they're distracted by the clutter and the chaos. Is that right? That is right. And if you think about how we all interpret information, if it's confusing, then we don't, we turn it off. Right. Because it's too much for our brains to process and we're already bombarded with so much information that it's like, pause. Right. So I always, I always try to bring the focus back to why are you doing this to begin with? <laughs> why are you doing yeah. a video? Right. And when you think about the reason why you're showing up, then you can think about your background. And is that supporting the information that you're sharing? Because if you've got this crazy background with all of this noise going on and, um, you know, if you're not watching, if you're just listening, I'm in my studio right now and I've got some lights and a green screen behind me. I almost changed how I was even going to show up for this interview because it's slightly distracting. 
and, and your eye goes almost sometimes it might want to go behind me instead of you focusing on me. Now, we, when we're making videos, I, I come back to the question of why are we making the video? What are you trying to share and offer? Because if there's anything deterring your, your viewer, the person watching you attention, then they're not really thinking about what you're talking about and what you're trying to share. Mm -hmm. And then they're either going to click right. off or the whole message is going to be lost. Check out. And they can't, yeah. Right. They can't go on that journey with you. Right. Right. And it could be, I think in, in for our, my audience as practitioners, it could be, don't, I would say, don't set your, your iPhone up you know, in on a little tripod, don't set that up in front so that you're seeing your really messy desk. You know, right. that, that may not be the message that you want, <clears throat> excuse me, to convey, but you might want to make sure that you have a clean background. It could be a, a part of your office. It could be with an adjusting table in the background or, or a table if you're an acupuncturist. It could be, that's fine, a picture, a fish tank, something, but not a window behind you that has traffic going by or you know, something that's chaotic or you've got kids running in and out, unless of course you're talking about children. But I think making a still background that looks good is going to take away that distraction so that the viewer can really focus on what you're saying. Absolutely. And as a practitioner, you know, you think about um, who are you talking to, right? And right. so when I think right. about coming to a practitioner, I'm coming to you for healing. And so when I am coming to you and you have got chaos behind you, Such a the good first point. thing that I feel, not even it's, what I think, yeah. it's just how I feel, yep. I feel chaos. <gasps> I don't that, know if I can trust you. Yeah. That's I don't know if I can trust point. you that you can heal me before you say a word. Wow. But if your that's background so is calm and has like you have a tree in your background, that is an element to me of healing and calm. It just calms me down. Even with the microphone that you have, I see the tree and it is like, oh, I, I, I can feel more relaxed. So I can take in the information that you're sharing with me about whatever it is to help me heal. So again, it's what is your objective? I also want to know if I'm coming to a practitioner that you're a professional. Yes. Because you yes. guys have a certain standard, right? Right. So because you have a certain standard, I can say it's almost like walking into your office. Do you have a chaotic office? If you're a chiropractor and I come walking into your, your office, if you've got papers all over the place, and if, yeah. your, if your lobby or your area where I'm waiting is chaotic and crazy, then I'm going to look around and I'm probably going to turn around and leave. Yep. Yep. That's right. So you want to think about your video in the same way. You're inviting them into your space. So how do you want them to feel when they're with you? So that is so good. I, so good. I'm going to, I am definitely going to listen to this again because it's so good. So once we've got this, we, we know that we've chosen clothes that are appropriate for the profession. In other words, as a practitioner, you wouldn't want to show up and do a video in your, you know, a tank top or unless you're <laughs> showing exercise for you, right. that's appropriate for you. So for those of you that are listening again, Chrissy's got a tank top on because she is a yoga instructor and a stunt woman and a camera ninja, right? A video ninja. So, but her clothing, this is just who she is. And that's, that's part of her style, her brand. For us, I wouldn't show up with like a tank top on and, you know, I, I just wouldn't. It's not, it's not, doesn't, it doesn't exude what I represent. Just like as practitioners, you don't want to show up for your people in some like you know, t-shirt that just says, you know, I drink beer for fun or whatever your t-shirt says, <laughs> you want to make sure you've got, you know, a polo shirt on or something that's buttoned up, but then you look professional because you're going to feel more confident. And then that confidence is going to come across the camera. Absolutely. So absolutely. What's the next thing we need to know about being confident on camera? Ooh, what's the next thing you guys need to know? Wow. That's a big question. I don't know. What's the next thing that you want to know? Well, I'm What's thinking, one of the biggest struggles that everybody struggles with my, my thing. I, I sometimes think how, if I'm, if I'm worried about me and I'm worried about my background, that's going to keep me from connecting with that person. But if I have my clothing are good, cause I'm a girl, I'm always going to be worried about my clothes, but if my clothing is fine and my background is fine, 
Now I have to find, I have to decide what I'm going to talk about and then I have to talk about it. So if I'm going to be on camera, do I have to use a teleprompter? Do I have to have, uh, like I have a sticky note right here on my computer. Do I have to have a whole bunch of sticky notes up so that I know exactly what I'm talking about? How much prep do you do before you get in front of a camera or do you, or should we? You know, that's a great question. And I, I honestly think it depends on who you are and what works best for you. And so you can say, okay, well, what does that even mean? You might not know what works best for you and you might need to try a couple things. What's great about having a camera on your computer is that you can put sticky notes all over your screen Uh and nobody can see them. Yeah. Yeah. So if you need to just look over to the side for a moment and look at your note and then come back and looking at the camera, then you can do that. And that will help keep you on track for what you're going to say. Um, I, I love keeping things super simple when I am explaining something because most people have no idea what you're talking about. And Mm -hmm. especially you guys as practitioners, it's really easy to, uh, talk in your language. (laughs) Yes. And I'm like, what? Yes. What are you trying to say? (laughs) And uh, you know, I don't know what an ingredient of a blah, blah, blah is. So, you know, number one, it depends on who you're talking to. But if you're just talking to your average patient who has no, no formal training and who has absolutely no idea what you're talking about, then it's, it's really great to break things down so that your average person can understand what you're saying. And what I have found, even with myself, you guys, I still struggle with this, that I feel like what I have to offer isn't enough. So I'm just like, bam, do this and bam, do that and bam. And now all of a sudden I've given you like 20 things <laughs> that you're like, Oh, oh I so in front of the camera. I you know? feel you. And so you guys, yep. I know it could feel the same way as a practitioner where you're like, I need to teach them about this and I need to teach them about this and I need to teach about this ingredient and I don't know, you know, and then it gets very complicated. But yeah. I have found, and I'm sure you can agree with me too, Rhonda, is that when we break things down and make them simple so that we can actually, so that the person watching can digest what we're saying, and then they can implement whatever you are offering, it resonates so much more. And then you being in front of the camera also don't feel like you have to push and give and blah, blah, blah. Right. You know? Right. Because that always feels so weird, doesn't it? Well, and it feels inauthentic, I think, because, because we're it trying. Is. It is. It's right. Because then who, <laughs> yeah. And so, because who's the focus on then? The focus is on me because I'm trying to push my information on you rather than just having a conversation. With you. Well, that was a little awkward. She just sort of froze mid sentence. I think her Wi Fi went out. So we will let that interview just kind of rest right where it landed. It landed in the perfect spot, of course. So I thought I would jump on and kind of wrap it up for us today. So, you know, making video might be a little intimidating for you. If you're one of those people that just says, oh, no, 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 it's definitely not for me. Yeah, it can be. It can, it really can be, I promise you will do great on video, but here are a few tips for you. Number one, remember that you're only talking to one person. That's all. It's just you and a conversation. Do you have difficulty talking with your patients? Of course not. You're more than comfortable having a conversation with them. So when you're looking at the camera or you're looking at your cell phone, you just imagine that there's one person not five, not 10, not 50, not 500, just one person. And there's one person on the other end and you're just having a conversation with them about whatever it is that you're gonna talk about, whether that's you know, how to eat better or how to make sure that you're using good, healthy products on your skin or maybe toxic household cleaners or you're talking about the types of exercises that someone may need to do to relax their neck and shoulders so that they don't have all this up here shoulder tension. Whatever it is, just be comfortable just as if you're talking to one person. And make sure that you're comfortable. You're comfortable in your clothing. You're comfortable in your surrounding. You don't want to have clothing on that doesn't fit right and you're fussing with it and 
probably more for girls than anything. Like we're always worried about our clothes. It's just what we do, right? But when we're comfortable in our clothing, that makes us feel ah, at ease. I'm not all tight and wound up. I can just relax. Make sure your background looks good. You don't have, you know, some crazy thing sticking out your ear. And then just talk to that one person. Make sure that you give them lots of value. Anytime, any of your content, you want to give that value. That's what's most important. It's not about you, my friend. It's not about me. It's about the patient. And that's what we have to keep in mind. So here's my, I have two things to say. Number one, if you're not sure that you know what you need to do with a video, here's what I want you to do send it to me. Just send it to me. You can email it to me. Go on the website. You'll get my, get an email. You can reach out and send me the link to your video and I will look at it. I promise. I will look at it and I'll give you my feedback and I'll be nice. Of course I'll be nice, but I'll give you my feedback and let you know. So send me your video. I'd love to look at it. Number two, in the show notes, you're going to find Chrissy's resource that's five tips for making great videos. And she just outlined a few quick things that'll give you a little bit of confidence and make you feel like you're a little bit more prepared for making those videos. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Rhonda Nelson. This is the Clinical Entrepreneur Podcast. I love having you hang out with me. We are out every single Tuesday with another episode that will help you grow your business like a boss and help you reach more of your perfect people and strategize ways that you can attract the right people and you can grow a thriving and profitable business. So wherever you listen to this episode, be sure you subscribe and that way you'll get every episode downloaded to your device. And if you love it, leave us a review because that helps Apple know iTunes know that we are providing valuable content for you, just like you provide valuable content for your patients. So again, this is Dr. Rhonda Nelson. Thank you for joining me. I've loved having you today. Have a great week. I'll be back next week with more info on the Clinical Entrepreneur Podcast. Take care.